Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome uh, to another episode of Ambassade Live. This is Dr. Adi Adibanjo and Busola Adibanjo coming to you uh, live with Ambassade Live this wonderful uh, second day of June 2023 while we're in June already. Uh, first and foremost, apologies for um, you know starting or coming to you a bit late. Uh, we just had some severe um, you know, uh, internet bandwidth, uh, connectivity issues. These are things that sometimes you have to deal with. Everything was prepared and set to go. Uh, but then we just had issues with uh, the uh, Wi-Fi signal and our ability to go on the internet. So we were just walking through that. But we're glad that you uh, stopped with us and that uh, you are uh, you joined, tuned in this morning for another episode of Ambassade Live. It's a joy to have you with us this morning. Praise God. Um, you know, we have a wonderful word for you, and we pray that uh, you will receive this uh, as a, a blessing to you, a help uh, as you continue your work with God in your relationships and your dealings with God and with people. And um, it, it promises to be enlightening indeed. So, welcome. Uh, once again, thanks for joining us live on Instagram and on Facebook this morning. Good morning, everyone. It's a joy to be here today. Thank you for taking the time to join us. It's always a very reassuring and pleasant when we know that there are people on the other side who are listening to us. We appreciate you being here. You're investing time in God's presence. You're not wasting your time. You're not um just being there there is an investment and in every good investment there's a harvest so expect your harvest today expect it tomorrow expect it throughout the year so open up your heart today as you anticipate what god has for you and i believe god has something special in store for you amen amen, amen. well thanks for joining us all those that are joining us again live on uh in on facebook instagram cindy uh santiago we see you from jersey uh, Sister Maribel, uh, uh, Mommy, uh, Ade Banjo, thanks for joining us this morning. Uh, we're just going to try and dive right into it. We don't want to take too much time uh, today. We want to be brief, communicate uh, just briefly. Uh, sow a seed in your heart that hopefully will, uh, will, you know, bring forth good fruit in your life, fruit that will benefit you and through you benefit others as well once again apologies for our, our late start this morning we know uh, sometimes we can't control these um, you know things that have to do with connectivity but we're just glad that we are able at all uh, to join you this morning thankful for the gift of a brand new day it's good to be alive today believe me uh, if we're not alive we won't even be having an issue of connectivity and all that so thank god for the gift of life for waking us up this morning for his mercies that are new every day there's always reason to be thankful and grateful to god and so thanks for joining us at this time please share the feed uh, share the invite others to join us as we go on another uh, journey into the word of god uh, you know catch us live perchance you're not able to you can always catch us on um, our youtube channel we'll post these teachings there Adi Ambusola Adi Banjo uh, on YouTube. Uh, you can go there anytime. Watch the videos. Uh, like them. Subscribe to the channel. Click the notification bell. And uh, whenever we post new content, you'll be notified. And then you can partake of that. Praise God. Welcome all those on uh, Instagram Live as well. We appreciate you being able to join us today. And we know you will be blessed. And so we're just going to uh jump right into it say a quick word of prayer hey can you pray or do you have something to share mm, yes. we'll pray and start the uh, word this morning and then at the end we will uh, share a few thoughts and um you know come okay. and wrap up the, the broadcast all right let's pray precious father in the name of jesus lord we thank you for your presence with us today holy spirit we acknowledge you we ask, Lord, that you have your way and you let Jesus be glorified. Lord, I thank you that you will saturate the atmosphere with your presence. Yes, Lord. 
we say come lord right now and inhabit lord god that is this place the atmosphere our hearts and that you will speak lord god through your son that as he ministers today, you will not minister, Lord God, Daddy, in the flesh, but you will minister, Lord, in the spirit, speaking forth words of life that you want us to hear. Thank you that your words will come, Lord God, Daddy, strong with power to instruct, to encourage, to reprove, to give direction, to um, help us, Lord God, Daddy, in every state of life where we are. Whatever we need, Lord, you know. Thank you that as your word comes forth today, Lord God, Daddy, it comes to bind up, it comes to heal, it comes to make us whole and help us, Lord, to the next level to become all that you have created us to be. Breathe upon your words today. Your word says that the letter kills, but the spirit gives life. Holy Spirit, breathe upon your words today. Let it give life. Grant us revelation. Illuminate, Lord God, your words. Grant us understanding. Help us to comprehend. Give us the grace to not be just hearers, but to be doers of your word. Acting in it. Doing exactly what it is that you have called us to do. Lord, we we'll love you. We we'll praise you. Thank you that you are joined the people from all over, from the north, the west, the south, the east, and the west, wherever they are. You are joined them this morning to come and hear your word and be whole and be redeemed and be set free. We trust you, Lord, and we give praise to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Praise God. Ah, yes. So, uh, God is good and is up to something good and um, his word is good. So thankful for the word of God. God's word uh, is, is God's gift to us. One of the greatest gifts God gave us uh, was his word. I'm so grateful that God didn't leave us without his word. Otherwise, we will not know what God's will is. We will be left to try to figure out what is on the mind of God, what is God's will towards us, what is God's thoughts towards us, what are God's plans for us, uh, is God happy with us, is he sad with us. Can you imagine if we had to, that was left to us to just try to figure out ourselves. I mean, we will be in a very difficult situation, wouldn't we? confused, uncertain, insecure without the word of God. Well, the truth is God did not leave us in such a state. But unfortunately, there are many people, Christians, that live like that because they don't understand the value of the word of God. That we don't have to leave, uh, live uncertain. We don't have to live, you know, uh, uh, insecure, fearful, not sure whether God is happy or sad, what God's plans for us are, what God's will towards us is, what, what God wants to do in our lives. There are many that live in that place of uncertainty. So they're fearful, anxious, uh, uh, you know, worried. Because either number one, they don't realize that, the, they don't understand actually the value of the word of God. That God's word communicates to us God's mind, God's will, God's plans, God's intentions towards us. And so God, if we take God at his word, uh, that God and his word are one, then we, we go to the word to find out the will of God. Then we can be at rest, at peace. We're not wondering, is God happy with us? We know he's happy with us. We're not wondering if God will come through for us. We're not wondering if God has forsaken us, has forgotten us. We don't, those things, are in my, when those thoughts and those feelings and one finds oneself in that state, it's evidence that, man, you need to get in the word to understand God's thoughts, to know God's plans, to know you're never alone. God is with you, that he's good. He's working things for your good. All those things are what the word of God communicates to us. And that's why we love the word of God. We love to share the word of God, to remind you of some of these truths, to encourage you in whatever situation. Okay, so that is leaving. She will join us later on at the end of the broadcast to wrap things up. Praise God. That's why we, uh, we, we, we love the word of God. We value his word. When we find ourselves in a place 
where we don't know what to do. We're worried, we're concerned, we're a bit fearful about what's happening, what's going to happen. Just go to the Word. Go to the, what does God's Word say about this? Because once you get the Word of God, you get the mind of God. You're reminded of uh, God's thoughts and God's plans and God's dealings and God's workings in your life. Thank God for the Word of God. Believe me, I found myself in situations where things just seemed like nothing was happening. You know, nothing seems to be happening. There's, it seems, it looks confusing. It looks like, God, where are you? What's going on? What's happening, Lord? And the only recourse that I have many times in those situations is the word. Lord, I'm so grateful that I don't have to wonder <laughs> whether you're with me. I'm so thankful that I don't have to guess whether you are with me or whether you are for me or whether you're going to come through for me. I don't have to guess. I don't have to. I don't even have to guess. Oh, Lord, have I missed it? Uh, am I, am I, you know, am I out of your will? No. Go to the Word. And the God's Word helps you to understand not just God's will, but your place in that will. As, as you behold in the mirror of God's Word, you see the glory of God. You see God and you see yourself. You see where you're at. And that brings you back to the place where you're supposed to be. And that's what we endeavor to do in these times together. Um, I'm sorry, life to address issues that maybe are troubling our hearts, things that we're con confronted with, facing, dealing with, uh, and see it from the word of God. What does God's word have to say? So we can remind ourselves of God's mind, God's will, concerning those things with the hope that it will minister peace to our hearts it will minister you know instruction correction guidance in in the things that we're dealing with or facing or or challenged by so that we're not struggling through life trying to figure things out by ourselves believe me if you try to figure things out by yourself you'll make a mess of things you make a bigger mess of things <laughs> If you try and figure out your relationships, you figure out what you're supposed to do, what you're going to do, what's right, what's wrong by yourself, you will make a bigger mess of things than they already are. But when you know, I don't have to try and figure all that out myself. God has given me his word. God has given me his mind. I can tap into the mind of God. I can understand the will of God. I can know what God's thoughts are in this situation. And then I can align myself with that and be at peace and at rest. He says, return unto the Almighty and be at peace. More often than not, the times we are not at peace is because we have departed from the Almighty. Mark that down. Whenever there's a lack of peace, a lack of rest, there's turmoil, there's fear, there's anxiety, there's chaos, all that. You can trace it to the fact that you have departed from the Almighty. A lack of joy, you have departed from the Almighty. That's why it says, return to the Almighty and be at rest. Be at peace. Amen? And that's our goal for you. That's our desire for you. That you live in peace. You be at peace. Don't just, you know, stay where you are. You know, whether it's in a place of great challenge or in a place of, you know, whatever the case may be, if there's no peace and there's no rest, guess what? There's been a departing from the Almighty. And the best thing you can do is return to the Almighty and say, Lord, you have moved because you never changed. I'm the one who's moved. How did I move, Lord? What changed? What am I not seeing? What am I not doing? Show me, Lord. From your what? From your word. You have to wonder in your mind. Figure it out. Pack it. Portion it. Figure it out. Conclude it in your mind. You can conclude it in your mind, but you can still not be in aligned with the Almighty. So the best thing we can do is return to the Almighty and be at peace. I want to talk to you today about something, uh, for a lack of a better way to uh, describe it. I just, call, I just title it, That's Not Fair. 
<laughs> that's not fair. Amen. And I'm sure most of us, if not all of us, you know, there's a cry sometimes, uh, there's a cry in our hearts most times for fairness or fairness or justice that only God can satisfy. There's an innate cry for fairness, for justice in our hearts. And only God can satisfy that cry. And as we go on, you will understand what I'm talking about today. Uh, a cry for fairness and justice, that's just not fair. We want to see what is fair done. And what is fair just means what is just. Means justice. Justice. Amen. And so, I mean, uh, without going deep, I, I preached a message many, uh, like a couple of years ago, during the height of this thing, you know, social justice and all that stuff, you know, uh, maybe along this line. But God reminded me like a week and a half ago, you know, he just, you know, dropped this in my heart again and began to, uh, you know, just deal with me. Because you observe sometimes in the world, you see certain things that don't just seem fair. Uh, sometimes people do things that is, it just doesn't seem fair. Sometimes governments do things that it just doesn't seem right and fair. You see a, a, a gross miscarriage of justice. You see that, you know, things are being done that, you know, are just not right or just not fair. And there's a cry in your heart, God, where are you? Where's the God of justice? Where's the God of fairness? And the danger sometimes is uh, we can uh, begin to try to administer judgment in those situations where we feel or see that things just don't seem fair. We can try to begin to administer judgment in those situations. And so I'm going to speak to us today briefly about justice and judgment and the fine, the fine line between the two the difference between the two and where we're supposed to find ourselves and where we're supposed to put God. And the importance of this is so that we don't put ourselves where God is supposed to be. <laughs> we don't place ourselves where God is supposed to be. We reserve the judgment seat for the one to whom judgment belongs. But we do justice. That means we do what is right, what is fair. Amen? And so th that cry for justice and judgment is always there. Even, uh, um, even a, a boy as young as our son, you know, our son, you know, uh, or our oldest son, uh, you know, when he was going to go into college, started writing these, you know, college essays and figuring out what he was going to do with his life, what he wanted to study and things. And he made a comment. When he was writing those things, um, he referred back to when we lived in India and, um, you know, were exposed to uh, such inequities, you know, the suffering of people, the, the abject poverty in which some people lived sometimes and, you know, just the sometimes gross mistreatment of certain people and it was amazing that even at such a young age those kind of things affected him and so when he was writing these essays it was you know it began to come out of him you know you know that you know during his time in India you know when he observed uh, you know all these things that were happening and things some things that were just not fair that it, it put a desire in him uh, to, to, to fight for justice to 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 do what to 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 fight for what is right and so that influenced his uh his desire uh, you know to pursue uh um you know law to pursue a law degree right now he's studying criminal justice with a desire to pursue a law degree but that that was rooted in in something in him even from a very young age Discerning that, man, those things, there's some things that are just not right and just not fair. And so that 
that is common to every man. There's there's a cry. There's a there's a cry in us for judgment, which is really a cry for the one who created us, who is God. Every cry in your heart for judgment for what is right is a cry for God, for God to move, for God's will to be done. A cry in our hearts. And so that cry is there, but you know, just to uh, speak a little bit. I'll just say a few things and then we'll dive. It says, you know, justice can be viewed as the impartial application of God's standard of righteousness in the affairs of men. <clears throat> the impartial application of God's standard of righteousness in the affairs of men. I'm going to read some definitions, some things I've written. You know, I heard the man of God say this. That what we call just you know, is the impartial application of God's righteous, God's God's standard. Notice God's standard of righteousness in the affairs of men. God's standard. Many times what we call justice is not God's standards. It's not based on God's standards. Often it is partial and biased based on our standards of righteousness, our own standards, the way we see things, which reflects our upbringing, our experiences, our preferences, our selfishness. Some of sometimes these things influence our standards of righteousness, and they invariably influence what we call just. Because what I call what is just for me may not be just for somebody else. If it's based on my standards of justice and righteousness. If it's based on my experiences. If it's based on my interpretation. My understanding. My expectations. If it is based on any of those things that are mine. Then the justice cannot be impartial. It can really be true justice. Because then we're not impartial in the application of God's standard of righteousness. Do you know that God's standard of righteousness is far above ours? It is far above ours. Way above. In fact, you know, when Jesus came, in, 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 when he started his ministry and he started that Sermon on the Mount in Matthew chapter 5, and he started talking about the standards of righteousness, comparing the law of the Old Testament. It has been said, thou shalt not commit adultery, for example. He says, but I say to you, but you really want to know what God's standard of righteousness is? If you even look at a woman and ugo her, ooh, lustfully, you have already committed adultery in your heart. That is... A high standard. And then he said, you know, it's been said, thou shalt not kill, right? From the law of the Old Testament. But he said, if you even call a person a fool, <laughs> if you say raka, or thou fool, you have murdered them already. Wow. What a standard. What a high standard of righteousness. So if we're not talking about courage of justice or what is right, and we're basing it on some standards, is it on God's standard? Because you see, when you not start putting it on God's standards, you know what you will see? You will see that even you that are saying something is right or wrong, even you are wrong. <laughs> even you are wrong. Are you listening to me? And the reason Jesus gave us that standard of you know don't say thou fool or don't you know don't if you look lustfully the reason he brought that to light was for us to understand that listen your righteousness is not going to come from you measuring up to god's standards because you can never measure up to god's standard none of us can and that's just the truth that is why jesus came and he was the only one who could measure up to God's standards, who could fulfill the law, 
And he did that for you and for me. And then he imputes his righteousness to us so that we are the righteousness of God in Christ. Or sometimes we'll try to portray that we are the right, we are righteous in ourselves. And that puts us in a place of, you know, administering God's righteousness wrongly. We think we're all that. We even try to almost try to present ourselves as if we're all that. Like we don't make mistakes. We are always right. We know what is right or wrong. Even when we're caught doing what is wrong, instead of just simply admitting that we're wrong, no, we're going to wangle our way to make sure that we're right. Even if you're right in this, you're wrong in that. You have not measured up to God's standard. Are you listening today? And so the, the it's not about presenting ourselves as being on this you know, high standard where we do things perfectly. We know what's right to do, what's, what's not right to do. And then that forms the basis for us to, 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 that forms the basis for us not just to do justice, but to pass judgment on other people. Amen? So please hear me today. There is no real justice without the one who is the lawgiver and the only judge and at the end of the day the reason for justice the reason why we want to see what's right and fair the reason for real justice is because it affects the dignity and well-being of people and that's what it's all about doing what is right doing what is fair it affects the dignity the dignity of people. Amen? Every attempt at justice and fairness that leaves God and his word out is man-made. Every attempt at justice or doing what is right or what we seem think to be fair that leaves God and God's word out is man-made and it is bound to fail because it will be skewed to favor one person over the other. It will always be skewed to benefit one person to the detriment of another. Whether intentionally or unintentionally, that is what happens. Anything, any attempt at fairness or justice that leaves God and his word out is man-made. It's conjured up by man. Even if we try to put God's name there, if it is not based on who God is and his word, then it is just something you're coming up with. Do you know that there is injustice even in church, even in the body of Christ? Because there is impartial application, or there is rather, there's rather partial application of God's standards. Or we want to use God's name, God's name, to carry, to bring forth our standards of righteousness. This is what, this is the way we see it in our church. This is the way it is supposed to be done. This is the way we see it but any justice or fairness that leaves god and his word out is man-made it is bound to fail because it will always benefit one over the other it will benefit one person to the detriment of the other so it is it is really you know something that we need to take heed to and make sure that we are uh -uh, we understand our responsibility and we understand what is God's responsibility. Because can I say something to you? If you put yourself in the place of God, man, you can't handle it. You can't handle it. You cannot handle it.
to see, you know, I watched a show some t- one time, uh, Blue Bloods, and you know, the co- co- police commissioner, you know, was dealing with one of his men that work under him. And so one day, you know, he calls him into the office. He was trying to make a decision. He was trying to make a, a difficult decision concerning that person. And so when he calls the person into his office, he was standing up. He now told that person, he says, sit down. The person wanted to sit down. He said, no, don't sit down here. Go and sit in my chair. <laughs> Go and sit in my chair. And so the man, you know, very, trep- you know, very, you know, with trepidation went and sat down when he sat down it was like yeah so the commissioner asked him how does he feel he said uncomfortable <laughs> and so he goes ahead and asks him a question that i have this scenario and i have this decision to make if you were me what would you do if you no if you you were the commissioner what would you do the man was very uncomfortable. Thankfully, he gave the right answer. And the answer he gave invariably condemned himself. <laughs> so it was a situation where the man had done something that deserved judgment. And the commissioner was struggling with how do I administer justice here? And so he brings the man himself, says, sit in my seat. If you were supposed to paint a scenario for him, if there's a person that did this, did that, did this, basically describing what the man had done. He said, if you were the commissioner, what would you do? And invariably, the man said, well, guess what? I will fire the man. Which was the right answer. I say all that to say this. It's an uncomfortable seat. To take the seat of judgment. That's why it belongs to only one. The one who is perfect in all his ways. The one who is who, in whom there is no unrighteousness. The one who, uh, who is the lawgiver himself. It is only the one who is the lawgiver himself that can sit in the place of judgment. And so it's important to understand some of these things. <clears throat> at the end of the day, why? So that you can be at peace. Be, listen, I'll say again. If you take the place of judgment, judging people, criticizing people, you put yourself in a very uncomfortable place. And we're going to read a few scriptures to highlight some of these things to us so that we understand how to uh, how to get that cry for fairness and justice in our heart answered that we don't resort to trying to answer that cry or meet that need ourselves we don't have the capacity to meet that need only god can meet that need that cry in our heart for fairness and justice if we try to meet that by ourselves guess what we will put ourselves in the place of god invariably put ourselves in the place of judging people, criticizing people, condemning people, because we're trying to satisfy the cry for fairness and justice that comes from our heart. A cry that only God can satisfy. Are you listening? Amen. So what is justice? Now I started looking in the in the in the Bible from the Old Testament and I found something that you know, many times when we're talking about, you know, uh, justice, it, it put justice and judgment in the same phrase, in the same verse. Like when I was talking about Abraham, for I know him, he will command his children, his household and his children after him to do justice and judgment. And I began to think to myself, justice and judgment. Why, why, why like that? And I found that justice and judgment are two different things. Justice is from the root word for this where we get righteousness, which is sadak. It's from the same root word as righteousness. So just it just means to do the right thing. Justice means to do the right thing. 
Justice means to do the right thing. And more often than not, it refers to personal conduct. To what? Personal conduct. It refers to what you do, not what somebody else does. So to do justice means you seek to do the right thing. Not to judge whether other people are doing the right thing. To do right, righteousness. Amen? So when you're talking about fairness, 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 fairness is not what other people do. Fairness is what you do. Because if we take personal responsibility for fairness, that is to do justice, to do right, then we don't have to bother about if others are doing right. When we begin to cross over into whether others are doing right, we're crossing from justice to judgment. Please hear me today. When we begin to cross over from doing right to whether the other person is doing right, we're crossing from justice to judgment. And I hope, you know, I try to break these things down simply so that, you know, we, we can get an understanding. Amen? So when our cry for fairness is, you know, so oftentimes people are so busy crying about fairness, about fairness, about justice, Meanwhile, what they're doing is judging people. Meanwhile, then they are not even doing right themselves. <laughs> Meanwhile, they're bothered about what the other person is doing. How the other person is not doing and how that person is not doing. You know, there are nations, without mentioning names, there are nations that... People are always pointing finger at what the president is not doing or what the leader is not doing or what this one is doing or what this one is not doing and calling it justice. No. They're passing judgment over others. Meanwhile, they are not doing justice themselves. If everybody will be concerned about what they are doing instead of what the other person is doing, that's when we will see justice being done. But no, we are good, we are right, we are perfect. It's the other person that needs to do right so that there's fairness. If we keep pushing the, the you know, fairness on the other person doing right, guess what? The other person is pushing fairness on us doing right then there will not be fairness being done. We will just be sitting there passing judgment instead of doing justice. Amen? Are you listening today? I hope you know, I'm presenting this very simply so that we can apprehend this. So to do justice is to do right, for you to do right. Justice is you doing right. If I do right and you do right. What if I do right and they don't do right? Then leave that judgment to God. <laughs> you just keep doing right. But it's not fair. Aha. <laughs> that cry for it's not fair. Guess who is going to answer that cry? Guess who is going to satisfy that cry? God is. But invariably, we try to answer that cry for fairness ourselves. Especially when we think we've been doing right, we've been doing right, but right is not being done to us. So we try to answer the cry for fairness and justice in our heart by ourselves. And in so doing, we cross over into judgment. Is somebody hearing me? The word judgment is the word mishpat. And what judgment is, it's a verdict pronounced judicially. 
whether favorably or unfavorably, when we pronounce a verdict, it refers mainly to what others do. We estimate and pronounce a verdict on what somebody else did as judgment. It's said to be the act of deciding a case or cause. Who is right? Who is wrong? That's what judgment is. And then passing sentence. What we're supposed to do is seek justice, which is what we do. We seek after justice. That means we seek to do what is right, but leave judgment to God. We seek justice. When you say seek justice, seek justice means you seek to do what is right. Not to seek to make others do what is right. Or seek to, you know, uh, to, critique, to, to critique others for what is wrong they did. That's judgment. Amen? Are you following me today? We seek justice, ours, but stay away from judgment that belongs to God. There's a verse in Micah. Micah, if you have your Bibles, open to Micah chapter 6. And in verse 8, Micah chapter 6, verse 8. Let's look at that. Micah 6, 8. Micah chapter 6 and in verse 8. He says this. I'll read from the New King James and from the New Living Translation. He says this. He has shown you, O man, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you? Adigbenga. Because <laughs> I'm talking to myself too. Because this pertains to every single person on the face of the earth. Because each one of us has that cry for what is right in our hearts. But if we try to answer that cry from our heads, by ourselves, invariably there will be miscarriage of justice. Because it's going to be based on our perspective, our point of view, how we feel, what we deem to be right. And it's going to be skewed in our favor and to the detriment of the other. Invariably. So what does God say? Micah 6, 8. He has shown you, O man, what is good. And what is good that God has shown us. And what does the Lord require of you? To do justly. Or to do justice. To love mercy and to walk humbly with your God. To do what? To do justice or to do justly. Justice is what you do. Do justly. You does do justly. And then love mercy. Ha. You see that love mercy part? That's the part that keeps you from crossing from justice to judgment. That's the part that keeps you from crossing from what you're supposed to do to taking God's place. Loving mercy. Do justly or do justice. Love mercy and walk humbly with your God. The walk humbly with your God is the part that keeps you in that place where you can keep loving mercy and showing mercy because you humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. Because otherwise, you, you, you self will want to rise up. <laughs> and when self rises up, it invariably takes the place of God and starts administering judgment. Starts evaluating the rightness or the wrongness of what the other person did. Moves away from evaluating the rightness of what they do, justice and moves to evaluating the rightness of what they did, judgment. To do, keep from doing that, you have to love mercy and stay humble before God. Look at what it says in New Living Translation. Know, O people, the Lord has told you what is good, and this is what he requires of you, to do what is right, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. It is loving mercy and walking humbly before God that keeps us from crossing over 
from justice into judgment. I'll say that again. It is loving mercy and walking humbly before God that keeps us from crossing over from justice to judgment. Because every time we cross over from justice to judgment, you know what we did? We had judged ourselves as knowing better. Is somebody hearing me? Amen. Look at James. Let's read a few verses. Look at James chapter 4. Just to buttress this. James chapter 4 from verse 10 to 12. Say it is loving mercy and walking humbly before God that keeps you from crossing over from justice, which is doing what is right and fair, into judgment, criticizing others for what they do. James chapter 4 from verse 10 to 12. See what it says. James 4 from verse 10 to 12. He says, Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and he shall lift you up. Who will lift you up? God. Can I, can I encourage you today? Don't think humbling yourself is going to give you the short end of the stick. You need to trust God. Trust God that he will lift you up. He will vindicate you. Wait on the Lord. Don't try and administer judgment by yourself. Criticizing, pointing out what people did wrong, what they should have done, this and that, passing sentence on people. Humble yourself under the might. You know when you're humbling yourself, you're not humbling yourself for the sake of people. You're humbling yourself under the mighty hand of God. Hallelujah. Because sometimes when we say humble ourselves, well, how long am I going to humble myself? If I humble myself, they're going to take advantage of me. They're going to take, think I'm a fool. Well, that's if you're humbling yourself before men, for men, for the sake of men. Well, if you're humbling yourself under the mighty hand of God, the one to whom you're humbling yourself will exalt you. So you won't need to exalt yourself. How long am I supposed to take this? Trust God, he will exalt you. Then he says, right after saying, humble yourself in the sight of the Lord, and he shall lift you up. Verse 11, James 4. He says, speak not evil. Of another brethren he that speaks evil of, of his brother and judges his brother speaks evil of the law and judges the law but if you judge the law you are not a doer of the law but now you've become a judge so we are either doers of the law or we are judges of the law doing the law is justice when I say law doing what is right is justice so we can either be there or we are judges. <laughs> Amen. I'll read that again. It says, he that speaks evil of his brother and judges his brother speaks evil of the law and judges the law. But if you judge the law, that means you are the one estimating what is right and what is wrong. You are the judge of whether people have met the standard of what is right or not. You are judging the law. If you judge the law, you are now not a doer of the law, but a judge. I want to be a doer of the law. I want to stay on that side. Not on the side of judge. Look at verse 12. He says, there is one lawgiver who is able to save and to destroy. Who are you that judges another? Who are you to judge somebody else? Amen. Judging others invariably is tied in with lifting ourselves up. I'll say that again. Judging others. Listen, I know this may be hard to chew. But judging others invariably is tied in with lifting ourselves up. Showing ourselves to be right. To know what is right. Judging others. Criticizing others. Censuring others. Is invariably tied in with lifting ourselves up. We're lifting. Humble yourself. God will, God will lift you up. But when you judge others, you are lifting yourself up. You are trying to present yourself as right 
and them as wrong. You are trying to do what? Present yourself as right and them as wrong. Because if that wasn't the case, if, if you realize that, listen, even me that I'm saying someone is wrong, I am even more wrong. I'm wronger. <laughs> if there's such a word. If you, est if you estimate that way, that, listen, I can't judge because even me that I'm trying to judge, I'm wronger than them. So let me just quietly palm here and just make sure that I'm doing justice and leave the judgment to the judge. It says there is one lawgiver. How many? One. Who is able to save and to destroy. Who are you that you judge another? Don't judge people. Because, can I say something? Jud judging people invariably is tied in with lifting yourself up. That's why God is the only one that can judge. Why? Because he doesn't have to lift himself up. He is the most high. Where is he going to lift himself up to? He is the standard. Amen? And that's why he's the only one qualified to judge. Are you with me? We don't need to speak evil of or judge others. God is the judge. He vindicates and lifts us up. In due time. Or he puts one down in due time. Uh oh Yeah, God is the judge. He puts one up and puts down another. It depends on what you have done. <laughs> if you have judged, guess what? I'm not cursing you, but God will put you down. <laughs> but if you have humbled yourself and shown mercy, God will lift you up. Amen. Is somebody hearing me? If you are one who criticizes, who judges, who sits in God's seat of judgment, in due time, what, what is going to happen? God is going to put you down. It's not a curse. It's the word. He puts, he lifts one up and puts down another. Amen. But when you humble yourself and wait for God's lifting, and then rather than judge, you just do justice. God is, is righteous. In due time, he will vindicate you. He will lift you up. Amen. But you just keep doing what? Seeking mercy. You just keep doing what? Seeking mercy. And walking humbly before your God. Let's read Romans in chapter. Uh, just read a couple of verses. And then we'll wrap this up. Romans in chapter 14. I want to read a few verses to us. From Romans 14. Romans chapter 14. I hope this is helping somebody here. It's helping me. <laughs> do justice. That means do justly. That's my job. That's my responsibility to make sure I am endeavoring to do justice. To love mercy. To love mercy. I, to love showing mercy. Just be merciful. Just be merciful. And then walk humbly before your God. That is what God requires of you. In Romans, what did I say? Romans what? 14. Romans 14. Let's read that. Romans 14. I hope this is clarifying some things for us so that we know what God expects of us. This is what God wants from us. Do justly. But when they do like that, it drives my brain. Yeah. Do justly. You do justly. Let God take care of that. Romans 14. Uh, and from where? You didn't say the verse. Romans 14. Let's read verses 3 and 4. And then verse 10 and 13. Romans chapter 14. Verses 3 to 4. It says, Let not him that eat despise him that eats not. And let not him that does not eat judge him that eats. For God has received him. Look at verse 4. Who art thou that thou judges another man's servant? To his own master he stands or falls. Yea, he shall be held up. 
for God is able to make him stand. For God is able to make him stand. Look at go to verse 13. Verse 13, Romans 14, it says, Let us not therefore judge one another any more, but judge this rather, that no man put a stumbling block or an occasion to fall in his brother's way. Amen? Amen? And you know how you keep from you know, uh, putting a stumbling block in your brother's way? Do justice. <laughs> Amen. Because if you do justice, if you do what is right, you don't put a stumbling block in your brother's way. You put a stumbling block in your brother's way when you cross over from justice to judgment. That is what you're supposed to do. See it. It says, let us therefore not judge one another anymore, but judge this rather. What are you supposed to judge? You're supposed to judge that you are not putting a stumbling block. You're supposed to judge that you are doing justice. Forget about them doing what is right. Are you doing what is right? Are you doing justly? And then, doing justly is not enough. Then, are you loving mercy? <laughs> are you loving mercy and walking humbly before your God? Are you putting God on the throne? Putting Him and His Word ahead of what you feel and how how you you know what your mind and your emotions are saying putting god where he belongs are you are you crossing over that line amen please take heed to these things it is very very important verse 10 says but why do why do you judge your brother or why do you set at not your brother for we shall all stand before the judgment seat of christ why do you judge judgment seat of who of christ of of me <laughs> no of christ so why do you judge each other why oh i can't wait for judgment seat of christ i want judgment now <laughs> don't worry god is still there judgment seat coming but god is still judge you know how he puts one up Puts another down Amen. on the basis of what you do not on the basis of what they did on the basis of what you do this is humbling isn't it do justly Amen. love mercy Amen. and walk humbly before god Amen. walk humbly before god amen? amen that's not false humility that is god humility to understand that hey i can't sit on the on the commissioner seat though. Hey, I can't sit on Jesus' seat though. Woo! That's a hot seat, man. If I do that, man, there will be a heaviness that comes on me because I can't handle the weight that goes with that seat. Even Jesus refused to handle the weight that goes with that seat. Remember that? When he was on the earth? He refused to, to, to put himself on that seat prematurely remember that story when they caught a woman in adultery mm -hmm. in the very act right and they started applying a man-made standard of righteousness that was not impartial it was partial he said if anyone is caught in adultery but well, guess what it was only the woman that they brought isn't that partial? Isn't that partial? Wasn't the man in, involved in the adultery as well? So impartial, impa partiality has already started. Mm. And then they bring it to Jesus to try and put, to try and rubber stamp <laughs> their partial judgment. So they were not concerned about doing justice, they were concerned about judgment. So they come to Jesus and say, Jesus, we caught this man in the very act of it. Now the Lord Moses says, such a one should be stoned to death. What do you say? Hmm. <laughs> you know what Jesus did? He did justice. <laughs> he 
He didn't pass judgment. And he said to them, he that, is with, um, he that is among you that is without sin, let him be the one that casts the first stones, that executes the sentence of judgment. Let him be the one that executes. The one that is without sin is the one that can cross over from justice to judgment. Let me see who is there. Who among you is there that can confidently cross over from just doing justice to judgment and cast the first stone? Let's see. And the Bible says they all left one after the other. And it was just Jesus and the woman left there. And even though Jesus was without sin and he could have executed judgment, but he loved mercy. Amen. Woo! He loved mercy. Amen. He said, woman, has no one condemned you? He humbled himself. He humbled himself. Jesus humbled himself. Because God had committed judgment to him. But the Bible says, but mercy rejoices or triumphs over judgment. Amen. Is somebody hearing today? Amen. I hope this is helping us. Amen. Hallelujah. Just read those verses yourself. Has no one condemned you? He said, no, Lord. He said, neither do I condemn you. you. Neither Lord, do I pass you. judgment. But go. And sin no more. Go and do what? Sin, go. Lord. Which means go and do justice. Go and do right. Go and do right. When you show mercy, you receive mercy. Are you following me? Let's read one more verse. He says there are many we could read. Let's read one more verse in James chapter 2 from verse 8 to 13. James 2 verse 8 to 13. You read that for us. It says, if you fulfill the royal law according to the scripture, you will love your neighbor as yourself. You do well. Verse 9. He says, but if you have respect to persons, you commit sin. And you are convinced of the law as transgressors. Verse 10. For whoever shall keep the whole law and yet offend in one point, he is guilty of all. Verse 11. For he that said, do not commit adultery, said also, do not kill. Now, if you commit adultery, now, if you commit no adultery, yet if you kill, you have become a transgressor of the law. Verse 12. So speak you, and so and so do, as they that shall be judged by the law of liberty. Verse 13. For it shall have judgment without mercy, that shows no mercy, and mercy rejoices against judgment. For he shall have judgment without mercy. The person that has shown no mercy will have judgment without mercy. Oh, is somebody hearing me? How many of how, how many of you apart from me you 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 need the mercy of God? You want the mercy of God. Then show mercy. Love mercy. Love mercy. And walk humbly before God. Amen. Oh, there's so many things I could say, but I have to wrap it up. Amen. I have to wrap this up so that we, you know, we can. You know, we can we you know we can just finish this, but understand this that listen, that's not fair. The cry for fairness that comes from our hearts from deep within us, only God can satisfy. And what does God require of us? He let us know to do justice, do justly. You do the right thing. You take the highway and keep doing right. How long will I keep doing right? Don't worry. Until you come to the judgment seat of Christ. Amen. He that is faithful to the end will receive the crown saved. of righteousness. The same shall be saved. He that is faithful, not for a while. No, I can't take it anymore. And then we cross from justice to judgment. Please, let's refrain from judging others. Let's refrain from lifting ourselves up. By condemning others, by criticizing, finger pointing. There's many other scriptures. It says in Romans chapter 2 and in verses 1 and 2. He said, Who are you? 
you know what i know our time is fast spent but uh, can you find that romans 2 verses 1 and 2 1 2 3 in the message bible romans 2 verses 1 2 3 in, in the message bible It says those people are on a dark spiral downward. Some people are that are doing the wrong thing. Okay? But if you think that leaves you on the high ground where you can point your finger at others, think again. Every time you criticize someone, you condemn yourself. It takes one to know one. Judgmental criticism of others is a well-known way of escaping detection in your own crimes and misdemeanors. But God isn't so easily diverted. He sees right through all such smoke screens and holds you to what you've done. Amen. 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 Read three and four. You didn't think. Did you? You didn't think, did you, that just by pointing your finger at others, you would distract God from seeing all your misdoings and from coming down on you hard? Or did you think that because he's such a nice God, he it would let you off the hook better think this one better think this one through from the beginning god is kind but he's not soft in kindness it takes us firmly by the hand and leads us into a radical life, life change. change amen i just love that the goodness of god leads you to repentance god is kind but he's not soft <laughs> amen hallelujah I love that rendition of, of Romans uh, 12, uh, chapter 2. He said, do you, all these smoke screens, do you think that by just pointing fingers you can distract God from your own issues? Let's take heed to these truths. I understand that, yes, what is right and fair and just. This, this truth right here can change a life, can ch change families, can change nations. Many times, nations, nations, there's a lot of finger pointing going on and judging people. They didn't do like this. They did like this. They did this. They didn't do that. What are you doing? Are you doing justice? If you are doing justice, keep doing right. And leave judgment to who? To God. God. Don't go on social media and start passing judgment, criticizing, finger pointing, highlighting people's mistakes, what they did, what they said, how they said, this and that. Hello. You who are doing that, do you know that you even do worse? Mm. <laughs> you do worse. But in doing that, you are trying to cover up your own and lift yourself up by making others Pointing out others' faults, failures, and mistakes. Rather, do justly, do justice, love mercy, and walk humbly before God. The word of God is what will judge us in the last day. And what's one word? If I leave you with one word that you need to understand, and I'll close with that. There's one word that you need to understand, one truth that guides judgment. One truth that guides judgment is this. God's mercy rejoices over judgment. Do you know why God can sit on the throne of judgment? Amen. Because he is a merciful, merciful God. God. Amen. If God wasn't a merciful God and he sat on the throne of judgment, he would have wiped us out. And deservedly so. So the most merciful is also the only one that can carry the weight of sitting on the judgment seat. Amen? Amen. You remember that truth. Mercy trials over judgment. Let that guide you and keep you from crossing that divide Amen. between justice and judgment you do justly that's your responsibility leave judgment to god that's his responsibility in the middle 
what what separates that divide is what love mercy and walk humbly that keeps you from crossing that divide is to love mercy and walk humbly mm. may god help us to do that Amen. so that we can live in a place of peace and rest that god has designed for us don't sit on god's seat you can't handle the weight you can't handle it in fact to bring headache <laughs> and it will position you to go where to go down because he that lifts himself up to seat uh, you know where the judgment seat is is high he that positions himself to sit there guess what you've lifted yourself up god is going to bring you down and show you you're not all that man you just think you're all that you're not amen rather humble yourself and watch god lift you up and put you in places that you haven't even imagined when god vindicates you you'll be amazed when god lifts you up even the ones that seem not to be doing justly they will look and say man see god see god amen amen let's take it to this truth and let god answer the cry in our hearts for what is just and what is fair in jesus name amen, amen. let's pray Father, oh, sorry it's fine. No, no. The time is gone. Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. No, before I have to give you <laughs> a chance. <laughs> really, really is it fine? <laughs> Praise God. Yeah. Just take a couple of minutes and <laughs> no comment. <laughs> Why? It's fine. No judgment. <laughs> Do what is right. Do your <laughs> <laughs> it's not just no judgment do justice <laughs> hallelujah <laughs> praise god well that was a good word that needs to be digested so i guess it's important for us to go back and listen to it again and understand the concept being shared there and understand what our part is what god expects of us and how we're supposed to relate with one another so that we're exercising discretion in our affairs in a way that is honoring and pleasing to god so amen amen, amen. praise god and please receive this message not as coming from one who is sitting in the seat of christ no we shall all stand before the judgment seat of christ so this pertains to me to us as much as it does to you it informs it's something that should inform our daily activities, our daily decisions. And you know the the, the 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 fear sometimes when you hear such a message is to begin to think about somebody else. <laughs> is to begin to think about somebody else and how they are supposed to if only they will right then you miss the point. No, this is a message for you. Amen. For you yourself. What somebody else does, how they do, is not your concern, is not your business. When you make that your business, you are crossing that divide into judgment. And you can't judge because you don't know the full ramification. You don't know the secrets of their heart. You don't know what is going on. You can assume, you can presume, but you don't know. Only God knows mm. the fullness of the picture. And that's why only he can judge. Amen. Amen. He says, judge nothing before the time when God will make bare the secrets of men's heart. You only see a little. God sees everything. That's why he's the only one qualified yeah. to judge. Amen. Amen. So let's take heed to that. Let's learn from these truths and apply our hearts to understand it. Once again, why am I sharing this? God wants to answer the cry in your heart for fairness and justice. But well, he can only do that if he is sitting on the throne of judgment and not you. Amen. If you're occupying his seat, he can't do that. But if you occupy where you're supposed to be, do justly, stay humble before God and love mercy, then God sits on the throne 
and he judges righteous judgment and he will answer the cry for fairness for justice that is coming from your heart and when he does your soul will be satisfied in the name of jesus christ amen 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 father thank you for this thank you. time in your word thank yes, you for Lord. this truth that we've heard yes. thank you father god for bringing it out to us by your spirit thank you Lord. and lord god i pray lord god that this truth will be applied that will be doers of this word and not hearers only yes Lord. and lord god that it will change not just our lives yes not just our uh families our homes our relationships but this truth can change nations yes father can change nations yes Lord. where people are not finger pointing and passing judgment day after day and occupying the seat that belongs to you instead of just doing justice and doing what is right Father, if we have a bunch of people that will do justice, things will change. Yes, Lord. Things will change. Yes, Father. You will occupy the seat that belongs to you and you will get involved in changing things. Thank you. Father, Lord. I pray for Nigeria right yes. now. Yes, for that nation of Nigeria. Zika oh, it's just from my heart to pray for my Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, let this truth about doing justice, loving mercy, and walking humbly before God, let it, Father God, let it be revealed so that people are not just complaining about this person doing this and that. Meanwhile, they are doing it themselves. Thank you. Even worse. Father, I pray that by your spirit, you will begin to quicken this in the hearts of men. To do justly, to do justice, to do right by you. To do right by their, by their fellow man. To walk in love. And refrain, Father God from judgment so that there can be change yes, not just father. nigeria all over the world yes lord. father god for that home that is in turmoil right now for that home that is in chaos the peace of god because one person is pointing to the other and the other person is accusing the other yes father we speak peace yes your peace rule lord we pray lord god that yes, each father. person would just take responsibility to yes. do justice to love mercy yes, Lord. and to see you manifest in your power, in your glory, and in your righteousness in the name of Jesus Christ. God, give us grace to wait upon your judgment. Yes, Lord. Give us grace to wait upon your judgment. Yes, Father. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, precious Father. Thank you, Lord. We give you praise and glory. Yes, Father. I speak peace yes. into your people's hearts, yes. into their minds, into their situations. Yes. In the name of of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 And amen. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Thank you, Father. Thank you. And perchance you are out here, you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior. I just want to give you an opportunity to receive him as that. Uh, uh, God sent his son Jesus to die for our sins, to suffer the punishment that we deserved for our mistakes, our sins, our failures. And he did so on the cross of Calvary. He took our sins, he took our sicknesses, he took our judgment. He took our judgment so that we could receive God's mercy. He took the punishment, the chastisement that brought us peace was upon him. He took it all. So the peace that you're looking for is one decision away. Mm. It's one decision away because the one that bore the punishment, the chastisement, the judgment that brings you peace, his name is Jesus. Hallelujah. And when you receive him as your Lord and Savior, you receive that peace because you receive the effects of what he did. You receive his righteousness, you receive his peace, you receive what Jesus offers you. And you can do so right now. You can receive that right now. If you don't have peace in your heart and you know that you know you, you, you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you can receive peace right now. Just the Bible says if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, 
you shall be saved. Now, whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen. Let's help you call this one. So if you want to do that, you want to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior, just repeat the simple prayer with faith in your heart coming from your lips. Say, Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father, I believe, I believe that Jesus died for me. That Jesus died for and me. And on the third day, and on the third day, He rose again from the dead. He rose again from the dead for me. For me, Lord, Lord, I invite you. I invite you to come into my heart. To come into my heart. I make you my Lord and Savior. I make you my Lord and Savior. I give my life to you. I give my life to you. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for saving me. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 If you said that prayer. Congratulations, you just became a child of God. <clears throat> you just became a new creation by the working of the Spirit of God, using the word that you confessed. God has changed you from inside out, Amen. turned you into a new creation, a child of God. Heaven is rejoicing, the angels are rejoicing. Amen. God the Father Amen. is rejoicing that one, two, few of his children have come home today. If that is you, let us know that you get made that decision, write to us at Ambassador International 15 at gmail.com. Let us know you made that decision. Find the Bible Believing Church near where you live and get connected there. Get planted there. Go faithfully. Faithfully attend and see what God will do in your life. You will hear teaching and preaching of God's Word that will help you grow, that will feed you with knowledge and understanding. Get yourself a Bible. Read the Bible daily. And begin to, as you begin to read, through new eyes, from being a new creation, things will begin to make sense to you. God will begin to speak to you, to direct you, Amen. to correct you, Amen. to help you, Amen. to nudge you. Amen. Say, no, no, not like that. No, 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 don't go that way. No, 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 don't react like that. He'll begin to guide you. Amen? Amen. And as you do so, your life will never be the same again. Lastly, pray every single day. What did I say? Pray every day. Talk to God. That's what prayer is. Just having a conversation with your Heavenly Father. God is your Heavenly Father right now. You are His child. Talk to Him daily in prayer. Just commune with Him. Converse with Him. Bear your heart. Share your heart. Pray to Him. Have a conversation with Him. And your life will never be the same again. To help you do that, uh, to learn to do that, because sometimes when people come near to faith and you just say pray, uh, you say, uh, how do I do that? What help you do that? I wrote a book called The House That Prayer Built. Uh, it's a it's a book that talks about prayer, uh, what prayer is, how to pray, the necessity, the importance of prayer. Uh, you know, uh, and it does this so simply. It demystifies prayer. You know, from something that religion has made it out to be, to where many people even disqualify themselves from being able to pray, and has made it something that is so simple. That God is waiting on you to do. That you can do. Even as a new believer, you can pray. It's just talking to God. Amen. So find, get this book. Read it. It will help you. It will encourage you. It will help you develop your prayer life. And your you know, fellowship and communion with God. That will build you up into the house that prayer built. So take advantage of that. Um, it's available on Amazon. I beg your pardon. It's available on Amazon.com. Uh, it's available at store.bookbaby.com. That's our publishers. Bookbaby, uh, just bookbaby. That's if you, if you type bookbaby.com and then you go to their bookstore, it's available there. You can reach out to Bookbaby if you want to order in bulk. They can get that uh, sent to you. Um, also, after you read the book, write a review on it. Uh, put that on Amazon or on Google. It's helps. available also at Walmart, Target, Barnes and Noble, all everywhere online books are retailers. Sold. Everywhere books are sold, online retailers, you find it there. Um, so take advantage of that uh, and be blessed by that. Thanks for joining us today. If you'd like to support our ministry, you can do so um, by praying for us, writing to us, connecting with us on our social media pages, on Instagram, on Facebook, uh, even on uh, YouTube as you watch the videos. Uh, leave a comment. Leave your comments. We'll respond to them. Uh, leave your questions also. We'll respond to them. Uh, and, you know, continue the conversation outside the limited time that we have live here. We can continue the conversation. Let the conversation not just be Friday morning for one hour, one and a half hours. Let it be ongoing as we text back and forth, 
the right of questions will answer you um, and uh, you can continue to grow that way praise god if you want to support us financially you know you can do that through giving um and the way to do that uh is you know on the screen right now if you're on pay, uh, facebook live paypal a adiband gmail.com venmo at adi dash adibanjo zell ambassade international 15 one five at gmail.com and then for uh wire transfers or checks uh make them payable to adi ambassade banjo td bank na account number 4330370464 routing number 03120136 and then the ABA or SWIFT code. Our ABA number is 03110266, and the SWIFT code is NRTHUS33XXX. Um, so please do so as the Lord leads you. Um, you know, support us financially as well. Uh, thanks for joining us. Um, hey, you just want to greet one or two people before we leave and log off. Well, for everyone that joined today, we want to say thank you. It makes a difference that you're there. Thank you for staying all the way through. We appreciate you. I encourage you to go back and um, go over the message and remind yourself of the truth that have been shared today. So for the people that I see online, Mommy Adebanjo, Cindy Santi, Maribel Ortiz, um, Mommy Sharonico, Sister Margarita Moraza, Mommy Oyedele, my turn, Sonia Chetri, Cindy again, and Suman Singh. Thank you. God bless you. We appreciate you. Love to your families. And for those that are online that didn't leave a comment and so we don't know that you're there, we appreciate you. And for those that will watch it after the fact, thank you for taking the time to invest in God and in yourself. Have a tremendously blessed week. We love you. We covet your prayers for us, even as we pray for you that God perfect will is being done in your life even as it is done in our in ours have a blessed week and go do the right thing amen god amen. bless you and please go to church this sunday that's the right thing to do <laughs> don't forsake yourself from assemblies yet go to church this sunday uh god uh loves that you do that go fellowship find the local bible believing church it's good to watch online but it's good to go to your local church to go and be a blessing and be part of the body there. God bless you. We'll see you next uh, week, Friday. But all through the week, you can connect with us, continue the conversation, write to us, message us. We'll respond to you accordingly. God bless you. Bye for now. Have a great day. And Jesus loves...